Here's an apologist talking about the Bible. The Bible has been read by more people. It's been translated into more languages and copied more than any book throughout the history of the world. The Bible is written by at least 40 authors at different times in different places over roughly 1,500 years. The Bible has survived criticism. It survived persecution. The Bible has changed more lives, more families, more governments, and the course of history more than any other book. But not only is it unique in these factors, I believe it's unique because it records miracles that happened. It uniquely is the Word of God that talks about salvation. While it's true that the diverse collection of texts that we call the Bible has had a big impact across cultures over time, we might still wonder whether they are truly unique when we dig into the details. You see, many Christians have an idealized understanding of their scriptures. The books that make it up are special and have God's stamp of approval on their view. But how unique are they really? While McDowell mostly focused on the effects they produced, I want to focus on the texts themselves. Starting with the Old Testament, scholars have long pointed out the following. The major narratives, like the creation and flood stories, have significant overlap with earlier stories like Enuma Elish, Atrahasis, and Gilgamesh. The stories of Israel's ancestors reflect customs and practices of an earlier time, as can be seen by studying newsy tablets. Biblical laws and wisdom literature look pretty commonplace when compared with older works like the Code of Hammurabi and Instruction of Parts of the Pentateuch are explicitly structured like Hittite treaties. People did not have the same standards for writing accurate history in ancient times, and it looks like the Old Testament is not immune from this tendency. Further, the Old Testament is filled with theological diversity. Trying to harmonize everything in the wisdom literature as if it forms a cohesive whole is a failed project. There's a huge difference with how the story of Israel is told in Chronicles as opposed to Samuel King's. There's diversity in the law, including about slaves, Passover, sacrifice, how to relate to Gentiles, etc. Are there many gods or just one? Does God change his mind? Well, it depends on what part of the Bible you're reading. In addition, the New Testament's use of the Old Testament looks jarring and out of context precisely because the authors were doing what everyone else was doing back then, getting creative with their readings of text to apply them to their own situations. Okay, that was a lot. But everything I just said is a summary of the topics biblical scholar Peter Enns covers in this book, so pick up a copy if you want to go in depth. And if for some reason you don't want to do that, then I guess you'll have to wait till I cover them more thoroughly in the future. And trust me, I intend to. The purpose of hammering these points home is twofold. First, some people don't know about this stuff, and they should. And second, no matter what you believe, I want you to have a realistic understanding of what the Bible is. Talking like it fell out of the sky or is an encyclopedia of eternal truths does not fit the facts on the ground. As Enns explains, quote, as to the question of the Bible's uniqueness, which is raised by the ancient Near Eastern evidence, it is certainly the case that the Bible is a book like no other, and unique is a very good word to describe it, provided that using this word does not prevent us from recognizing and embracing the marks of the ancient settings in which the Bible was written. Its uniqueness is seen not in holding human cultures at arm's length, but in the belief that scripture is the only book in which God speaks incarnately. As it is with Christ, so it is with the Bible. The coming together of the divine and human sets it apart from all others." End quote. As you can see, as a Christian, Enns has his own way of looking at the data without downplaying its reality. Maybe it's kind of like the Incarnation. Maybe it's unique just in the fact that it's God's book. Not that there's groundbreaking material on every page or that it's free from errors. I think this is the way to go if you want to be a serious Christian because then we can have the grown-up conversation about whether this is what we would expect revelation from a tri-omni being to look like instead of squabbling over a trivially false doctrine like biblical inerrancy. And once we start having that grown-up conversation, those of us who are skeptics can explain why it is we don't think that the Bible is God's word, like I do in this video next to me. Tap here and I'll explain.